Are you drinking what you think is clean, only to swallow hundreds of invisible plastic fragments with every liter? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're examining new evidence that many glass bottled beverages contain far more microplastics than their plastic bottle counterparts, and what you can do about it right now. I'm Alara Skye. This conversation focuses on a French government study that traced most of the microplastics in glass packaged drinks to an unexpected source. We'll walk through the findings, the health implications, and practical steps you can use to cut your exposure. A team at France's health agency, ANSES, analyzed 79 beverages, still and sparkling water, soda, iced tea, lemonade, beer, and wine, across glass, plastic, metal cans, cardboard, and large soft containers. Under sterile conditions, they filtered each sample to capture particles larger than 0.45 microns and compared results across packaging types. Across the board, glass bottles showed the highest contamination, roughly 100 microplastic particles per liter on average, five to 50 times higher than many plastic or metal containers. Sodas and lemonades were especially affected. Wine often fared better, likely due to corks rather than painted metal caps. The researchers pinpointed the source. The particles in glass bottle drinks match the shape, color, and polymer chemistry of the paint on the metal caps, not the glass. Polyester and alkyd resins, common in industrial cap coatings, shed microscopic flakes as caps rub during storage and handling, which then fall into the drink during sealing. They confirmed this by refilling sterile glass bottles and applying unused caps. With no pre-cleaning, the bottles averaged about 287 particles per liter. Blowing caps with filtered air or rinsing with water and ethanol dropped counts to about 105 and 86 per liter, respectively. Contamination fell substantially, but did not reach zero. The exposure adds to what many people already ingest. Estimates suggest you may consume around 5 grams of plastic per week from food, water, and air, about a credit card's weight. Over months and years, that intake accumulates and some particles lodge within you rather than passing through. Microplastics have been detected in multiple human tissues, including placenta, liver, lungs, kidneys, spleen, heart, brain, and stool. Laboratory work shows particles can enter your cells within 24 hours and cluster around the nucleus. As exposure rises, cell viability drops. The signal is consistent. These particles are biologically active, not inert. Population level data link environmental microplastic burden with higher rates of non-communicable diseases. In U.S. coastal and lakeside areas, census tracts with the highest microplastic levels in sediments had greater prevalence of diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, and cancer. Microplastic pollution ranked among the stronger predictors even after accounting for numerous other variables and worse exposure correlated with worse outcomes. Your brain appears particularly vulnerable. Nanoplastics, under 100 nanometers, can cross the blood-brain barrier within hours. Animal studies indicate they accelerate the spread of beta amyloid peptides associated with dementia. Human tissue analyses report brain samples containing seven to 30 times more microplastics than other organs, with even higher loads in people with diagnosed dementia. Circulation is another concern. Once in your bloodstream, microplastics are engulfed by immune cells that can become lodged in narrow brain capillaries. That mechanical blockage reduces local blood flow and sets off inflammatory cascades that impair cognition and neurological function over time. Researchers are exploring ways to help you eliminate microplastics more efficiently. Early studies examine cross-linked cilium and chitosan fibers that bind particles through hydrophobic and electrostatic forces, probiotic strains that trap plastics in protective biofilms, bile flow agents under investigation to enhance liver clearance, and autophagy-supporting compounds, like rapamycin and spermidine studied in cells and animals for mitigating plastic-induced stress. These are emerging findings, not clinical directives. What you can act on today is cutting exposure from packaged drinks. Start by filtering your water at home with a system designed to remove microplastics and heavy metals. 
Fill your own glass or stainless steel bottles with that water rather than relying on store-bought beverages that use plastic liners and painted caps. If your tap water is hard, boil it for five minutes before use. Research shows boiling hard water can remove up to 90% of microplastics by forming scale that traps particles. Let it cool, then store it in safer containers to keep total exposure low. Rethink how your containers are built. Narrow neck bottles, especially for carbonated drinks, need very tight seals that often rely on plastic liners or resin-based glues. Favor wide mouth glass or stainless steel containers with stainless ceramic or bamboo lids. For carbonated beverages you make at home, swing top glass bottles with rubber gaskets avoid painted caps and plastic shedding components. Inspect the lids you already use. Soft, white, or peeling liners often indicate polyethylene or resin. Avoid reusing bottles with plastic caps for storing your own drinks. Repeated opening and closing increases shedding. If you must buy a bottled drink, don't leave it in hot cars, windowsills, or sunlit counters. Heat and acidity accelerate particle release, and longer storage increases the load. Shift everyday habits toward reusable, safer materials. Replace single-use plastic bottles and cups with glass or stainless alternatives. Make your own drinks, water, simple lemonades, or other non-packaged options, so you control both the container and the time in contact with seals, paints, and liners. Time and transparency matter. The longer a beverage sits, the more particles accumulate. Consume store-bought drinks promptly rather than stockpiling. When possible, support brands that disclose microplastic testing and use inert materials, like borosilicate glass with metal lids that seal via silicone rather than plastic-based paints or liners. If you want a quick personal audit, gather the bottles and travel mugs you use most. Check for painted caps, soft white liners, or visible wear on seals. Replace the highest risk pieces first with wide mouth stainless or glass plus non-plastic sealing surfaces. Refill from filtered water and track how often you really need a packaged drink. Manufacturers can mitigate the cap issue through better handling and pre-cleaning. The same study that traced the problem to painted caps showed over 60% fewer particles when caps were blown with filtered air or rinsed with ethanol before sealing. Asking brands about these steps signals consumer demand for cleaner packaging. Your action plan for the week is straightforward. Filter, and if needed, boil hard tap water. Swap one painted cap bottle you use frequently for a wide mouth stainless or glass option. And avoid heat and long storage for any packaged drinks you do buy. Take 10 minutes to identify a brand that publishes microplastic testing and choose it next time. Here's your practical challenge. For the next seven days, drink primarily from filtered water you've stored in wide mouth glass or stainless steel containers with non-plastic lids. Avoid keeping any packaged beverage in hot or sunny places and replace one painted cap container in your kitchen with a safer alternative. Notice how simple changes lower your microplastic exposure without disrupting your routine. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.